Hi, Coach. Uh, this is Gustavo Ortiz with uh, Univision 19. Do you know speak Spanish, right? Uh, no. Muy poquito. <laughs> okay. How is that team getting ready? How is that team after we know that last week you have four players with COVID-19? How is it, the team getting ready to play this tournament in one city? Yeah, well, we, we, had three play, we had three players test okay. positive. Um, and the, the, the guys are, are excited to be back in the gym. Um, the guys are very aware of uh, what, is, what is going on and, and what this is going to look like for the, the next, you know, the, the few weeks leading up to, to going to Orlando. And uh, they've done a great job of being responsible, respectful of others, uh, following the guidelines and, um, you know, slowly getting themselves back into shape. And that's kind of what the goal is for right now. Jason Jones, please unmute. Hey, how are you doing? Jason, are you unmuted? Uh, okay, here we go. How are you doing, Luke? Jason, I'm you good. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I got you now. Uh, yeah, just, uh, just health-wise, I know you had the three guys test positive, but you had a couple of guys who went into the suspension with in injuries, uh, Marvin and I believe Justin. Just how are you – how was Marvin doing? How was he looking? And just how was Justin as well? Yeah, Mar Marvin, uh, you know, is a guy that in, – in, talking to throughout um, the suspension of play uh, continued to – you know, tell me how, how good he was feeling, but we wanted to get our, uh, you know, our hands on him and, and, and see. Um, and and uh, he's been working out here. Uh, our, our trainers feel uh, confident that he's, you know, he, he's ready to start playing again. Um, so that's good to see. Justin, uh, Justin, the same way his workouts uh, have been, been going well and uh, ready to play uh ready to play so pretty much everyone that was banged up a little bit is uh is doing better and, and excited to kind of be back on the on the court so do you treat this almost like a training camp like this i mean you hit so much time off how do you just integrate not just them everyone in, in, into that flow of getting back into you know playing yeah, it's it's kind of the phases and there's not a timeline set on those phases for us right now because we have to make sure we're ready to move on to phase two before we, uh, you know, not not by a certain date, but by when people are physically ready to do that with how much time we've had off. So uh, our top our top priorities right now are making sure one, everybody's comfortable, um, you know, two, making sure everybody's healthy. And then as that's happening in the environment and the culture is taking over again, then, you know, getting some skill work, uh, some individual skill work in, and then a bunch of conditioning, which we're working very closely with our medical department on as far as what's the best, uh, best approach with guys coming back uh, with being out for so long. Uh, so, you know, the, the phase one is, is let's get to Orlando as close as possible with a close group that's healthy and, uh, and ready to kind of pick up that intensity of, of play and contact uh, once we're, we're cleared to do so. Uh, James Ham, unmute please. Hey Luke, how's it going? Good James, how are you? Good. All right, so you had three players test positive, uh, and I know there's HIPAA stuff and all that, but all three have basically confirmed. Um, where are you at with those three? Are there any concerns they're not going to be able to get back in time to actually participate? And where are you at with Jabari Parker and uh, him being in Chicago and being seen out in public uh, over the yeah. last week? Um, no, you know, this. You don't want anyone to get sick, but if you're trying to find the bright side, right? If you, you test positive now, you're uh, you're most likely, um, from what I I can tell, you'll be ready to to play uh, by the time games come around in 
Orlando. Uh, all three of those guys are doing reporting, doing much better. Uh, they, they're, they're still getting, uh, we're doing testing uh, every other day. And for those guys, we either send uh, medical staff to them or uh, they're doing kind of a drive-by testing where they don't even get out of their car uh, at, the, at the facility. So they're, they're all reporting doing much better. Uh, we're just following the protocol uh, of the NBA. Uh, I've talked to Jabari uh, about being uh, out in, uh, in public and, and kind of reminded him, one, that even though he's been cleared to end his self-isolation, that you, we still can't have – uh, any of our anybody who gets sick doing hard physical work uh, until a, a, a you know a later date where you're cleared again by doctors um, with you know how this how this uh, virus attacks. So he's been reminded of that, and him as well as everyone our team has been uh, reminded of the importance of of wearing face masks and being uh, socially responsible, uh, not just for ourselves, but for everyone we come in contact with. So uh, we've had those conversations, um, but everyone, all three players that have tested positive are doing much better. Sean Cunningham, unmute your mic. Hey Luke, how you doing? Good, you? <laughs> Not bad. New normal, right? <laughs> yeah, no, the new normal. <laughs> um, just to be clear, with as it pertains to Orlando, you mentioned your phase about um, everyone being comfortable, healthy. In terms of being comfortable, do you have any reason to believe that all your players are opting in for Orlando? Is there anyone who, who you know, maybe maybe have apprehension, maybe not be wanting to do so? Yeah, um, I, that's not the understanding I have. I'm I'm very uh, open with our players, and I've 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 made it very clear that no no judgment, no pressure, uh, totally understandable. Uh, if if players or staff ch uh, choose to opt out of going, uh, we're totally in support of those decisions, and um, not a sin not a single player has come to me with that concern. Um, so from, from the best of my understanding, uh, our guys are comfortable with going. They're excited to go. And kind of what I'm talking about that comfort, being comfortable is we were all gone for so long. And, and being back in, in the gym and, and, you know, can I not, you know, I'm not shaking hands, social distancing, wearing masks around, all of that just, you know, creates a different environment than we're used to. Uh, within a, a close sports organization. So a lot of that comfortability is just kind of, like you said, the new norm, getting comfortable with, you know, when we get here, guys bring their own workout clothes. They have a, a, a change of shoes uh, waiting for them that they don't, they don't take out of the arena. So there's a lot of little things that are going to take us getting comfortable with. Uh, but as far as going to Orlando, um, my understanding, everyone on our team is, is, is good with it and excited about it. Uh, Jim Crandall. Sort of, at least through the computer, although right now all I can see is Sean Cunningham and I've had enough of him. But uh, relative to Orlando coach, there's been a lot of talk by the league and also the Players Association about using Orlando as uh, something of a platform to express their concerns about social justice. Have you talked to the players about that? Will that be a team thing or an individual thing? Um, do you have a plan for handling that? Um, any light you can shed on that for me, please? Yeah, it, it'll be both. And, and I, I agree. I think both sides make good points. Um, but, you know, I think by playing basketball, it, it gives – players, coaches, organizations, a platform uh, to, to speak and, and try to make a positive change. So um, we, I, I've talked to a, a lot of the players uh, individually about it. Uh, again, we, I and we as an organization encourage and are 100% behind uh, our players, our staff, expressing themselves how, how they feel um, is going to make a a positive change. We did a, you know, Bobby Jackson, who's um, 
I'll go and call him a, a legend here in Sacramento, uh, was a big part of a, a, of, of a peaceful protest that happened downtown here. And uh, myself, my family, uh, the, the players that were in town all showed up, uh, marched, you know, had the face masks on. But, you know, that's, that's just one of those things where uh, it was a great event and, and guys are stepping up to try to help make a change. Uh, we've teamed up with the Minnesota Timberwolves and, and done work um, with Coach uh, Saunders and I and, and some of the players to kind of get messaging out there. And we'll continue uh, to look for opportunities uh, to, to make a change and a change that needs to happen. Um, and, you know, by playing these games and being out there, I, I, I just think it continues to give our players and our organizations a, a, a great opportunity to bring people together, which sports does an amazing job of, and then also continuing to bring awareness to, uh, you know, to, to what's going on out there and how we can make it better. Just a basketball-related question, Coach, if I can, please. You said your guys were excited to be back. I mean, do they seem to be in pretty good shape? I mean, I know there's a difference between game shape and, you know, being in shape. And the second part is, can you talk a little bit about what you're doing specifically in practice maybe today and for the next few days? Yeah, well, it's um, – I, I was pleasantly surprised with the – you know, every every time I reached out, every player tells me that they're – in their their hometowns working out and running and they they give me the answer you're supposed to give the head coach but I was uh I was pleasantly surprised to see what what our guys look like when when they got back um we did a we we had the strength department run a, a conditioning test with the guys and everyone checked out to to be pretty um to do pretty well on that you're never in basketball shape unless you're playing five on five real basketball so we know that we're not there but part of it like i said to start is we just want to make sure we're we're giving our guys the best chance of not getting hurt early on and it feels like our guys are in a good place with that uh, you know, the, the ind individual workouts are allowed to become mandatory now, which won't really matter for us because most of our guys were showing up to optional ones. And again, it's, it's creating a new norm. It's, you know, coaches have face masks on while they're rebounding. They have, we have gloves on uh, while you're rebounding. Only a certain amount of people on the court. So there, there's some things we have to get used to. Um, but our guys have been uh, been showing up. The scheduling has to be set so that there's not too many people in the gym or the weight room or the training room. And they've, again, been respectful and on time with a lot of that. So even though it can be mandatory now, uh, not much will change uh, with how our guys have kind of been approaching uh, approaching their work since they've been back into town. Jason Anderson, go ahead. Luke, good to see you. How are you, buddy? Jason, I don't see you, but uh, I'm I'm doing all right. How are you? You're probably better off. Um, hey, so it, with back to Jabari's situation, um, is that fully resolved on the the league side? There was some question about dates and whether he had violated the protocol or not. If it, do you know yet whether there will? Yeah, be I, I don't have the specifics on it. Uh, the the what I do know is is what I shared, um, which is what that he was uh, he was cleared to end his self iso isolation. Um, but that's you know I, I don't have the specifics of where the league if they're if they're done looking into it or what I mean this is all new for all of us so uh, you know where where it would even go from there so uh, for now that's all I've been told. Dan Wolke, hey Luke, um, hey. I'm well. Uh, kind of two part question. I'm I'm curious. Uh, how, how do you view the 60 games and already happened this season, and kind of how important that'll be in Orlando? Will Will there be just kind of a seamless continuation? The good teams that were were good, the teams that were playing well were playing well, or is this going to be totally new? And then secondly, if you can look back to your time as a player, uh, particularly your time on those Lakers teams that knew they were going to be or thought they were going to be playing deep into the playoffs. What would it have done to kind of hit the emergency break in, in March on those? Yeah, 
it's going to be a challenge for everyone from the top seeded teams that have had the, the, you know, amazing 60 game regular season so far to the, the teams like us who are trying to get into that, uh, that playoff scenario. And um, the, the challenge is going to be finding that rhythm again. And now you, you, the, the difference is you talk about teams that I played on that were going deep in, into the playoffs Um you know, I think they approach this whole thing with a completely different mindset than we do. They they use the, the eight games in the training camp and everything to prepare for for um, kind of peaking as these eight games end and going into the playoffs. Now, for teams like us and and Phoenix and San Antonio, Portland, New Orleans. Um, we have to we have to find a way to create that chemistry and be peaking from day one of of the eight game uh the eight game season that's going to happen so that's a completely different challenge and uh it doesn't carry over i know we were playing well at towards the end of the season but it's for every team it's it's starting over uh really now we're we're further along because now we know each other um but that continuity needs to be found again and it's you got a limited window with a lot of uh a lot of distractions that that are are real that are out there so it's you know I think whatever team can kind of find their stride the quickest and 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 get back to playing how they were uh between us that are fighting to get in uh we'll have a big advantage hey coach um a couple of thoughts about what you're able to do within this next week before you go to Florida? What kind of restrictions are there? Uh, you touched on it. Will you, by the end of the week, be able to play five on five, for example? No, I, for now, we're just, uh, again, that's, we know when we get to Orlando, that's r- when the real training camp is is starting. So all we're really trying to do at this point is is get closer to being able to hit a training camp. Normally when training camp starts, you, you got a guy start coming back in September and you got a month to play and they're all playing pickup. And, and that's kind of how you build into it. Now it's, it's much tighter than that. So we're going to continue to do our individual workouts, our skill work, um, you know, watch film as far as getting familiar with the offense uh, of, uh, and terminology again. But a big part of this next week will be weight room and conditioning with weight, uh, the weight staff, the training staff, uh, as far as just getting uh, continuing to focus on getting our bodies right and available to really compete uh, when we get out of quarantine in Orlando. Do you have all of your coaching and training staff available this next week? This week, yes. And then we have a, a list of 35 that needs to uh, be turned in as far as the traveling party but as uh right now yeah everybody's in in town and and uh available uh until we leave for orlando thanks dave mcminnigan what's up luke dave you figured out the raising the hand (laughs) with little help from jason john (laughs) where you helped out too um Speaking of that list that you just referenced, I, I think teams are supposed to submit it today. Um, yeah. Could you take me through, even if you don't name the name specifically, um, what that was like uh, for you and your organization in terms of your input or Vladi's input or, or how you guys made that list? Yeah, so we've we spent a lot of time on it. Um, and and you know, I've even talked to other coaches. Every, everybody's struggling with it um, because we know we know how hard it is and how much of a commitment – um, everyone makes to work in this league. And now uh, now ev- this is kind of a chance to be part of the playoffs or try to get into the playoffs. And, and you're, you're having to tell people that they can't go. And, and at least for uh, us and some of the other head coaches I've talked to, everyone wants to be a part of this. And, and so it's, it's a challenge as far as finding that right, um, that right mix uh, between the the training staff and the and the um, the coaching staff and players and uh, how much practice time will there be? Well, there's there's going to be a ton of it 
until the games start. And then once the games start, there's not really any practice. So, you know, there's, you know, who are you bringing in? So it, it's been it's been very challenging, uh, more challenging than I would have anticipated. But, yeah, I've been in talks with Lottie. Um, I've been in talks with Tina, who heads up our, our downstairs medical department. Um, and, you know, we're, we're meeting again uh, when I get off of this Zoom call to kind of finalize that list. It's uh, the, rough, the, the drafts we've made constantly changes a little. And you are right today, Dave, is the, the day we have to have it in. But it's been, it's been hard. Is it, just to follow, does the number feel any what arbitrary, like knowing that between 22 teams you're going to have hundreds or more than 1,000 people total that, um, you know, if it was 40 people, it could make a big difference, right? I, I wonder if there's any. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think, I think most of us uh, continue to ask for uh, more people, but I think that's probably natural. And uh, the NBA is, um, they, they've added some people that, are coming but aren't included on on our 35 list but they've they've stuck strong to that so that's kind of the the number we're working with but um yeah we, i mean we've 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 all we 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 all want more uh but 35 is what we have so that's kind of where you know you you you, you got to find a way to make that work excellent yeah Marshall Maris, go ahead. Hey, Luke. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully you're doing okay. A uh, couple of quick questions. Uh, number one, when you talk about going to the bubble, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about this being a different type of situation. Um, you've been on both the coaching players, even as far as the media. Does it surprise you at all uh, that seemingly not, no one nationally is giving you guys a chance to even, I guess, be in the playing game? And has there been much talk amongst you and the players about having, you know, not necessarily extra probation, but kind of being counted out uh, as part of the group that's headed to Orlando? No. Um, that's, uh, our focus has been on us. And like I said, I think the teams that can build that continuity and that comfort again quick, quickly uh, will give themselves a chance. So we, we preach it all the time. We don't, we, we, we do our best not to let, you know, outside influences getting in the way of what we're trying to do. And uh, uh, we have not discussed that as a, as a group. We're in, we're in here just trying to, trying to get back to where we were. And if we can get back to where we were uh, at, towards the end of the season, uh, we'll give ourselves a, a, a good chance. And that's all you can ask for. You get, ask for a chance, an opportunity, and then it's up, up to us to, uh, to make the, the most out of that. And uh, that's kind of where our mindset is. And just to get some insight on leading us up to this part of, I guess, getting back together and everything, how, how much were you in contact? I mean, I know the NBA didn't want guys playing in games, and obviously you see Buddy Hill uh, playing in the, the Skins League and everything else. Was there much conversation about what guys were doing um, before you guys got back together? And were you at all concerned that, you know, playing games would lead to something like a situation you have right now with, three guys testing positive for COVID-19. Yeah, we, I was in constant contact with our guys. Our coaches were, um, but you know, this is, a, this is a grown men's league and this is, you know, we, we talk to our guys, but you can't make them do anything. And all we can do is encourage them to follow the guidelines that we've all been given. Do your best to social distance, wear a face mask when you're out wash your hands uh, as often as possible, stay away from shaking hands, those type of things. That's what we can tell our guys to do. Um, we can't make them do it, uh, but we can encourage them to. And, and there's always going to be risks, especially with how contagious this, this is um, in playing. Playing basketball is part of that. But that's also what a lot of these you know, young men have done their entire life. When things get tough, you play basketball. Uh, you take a week off, you play basketball. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's what, it's what we know and it's what, um, what we do. So, uh, the, the risk is there. Um, and unfortunately we have some tests, but, uh, some positive tests, but uh, now that's what it is. And it's, we move forward and learn from it. Matt George. Coach, how are you? Hope all the family is well. Thank you. 
Uh, have you, now that you know a little bit more about Marvin Bagley and, and hopefully his ability to be able to go, have you thought a lot about reincorporating him, the expectations for him as maybe a starter or an important role player? Or is it too early still for that? It's way too early for that still. Um, I'm thrilled that he's, he's um, feeling better and, and looking good. Um, and, you know, the, you look into the, into the season and, and one of the things I'm, you know, where, where you're, you, you look at missed opportunities and unfortunately, and not to Marvin's, you know, injuries are part of the game, uh, but he missed a ton of this season. And that, that's just so much room for growth uh, for a young player that, that needs to happen. You need to play uh, to, to continue to get better. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll take a look at it uh, when we get to Orlando and we're really scrimmaging and we'll see who's playing well. And uh, we, like I said, we were playing really well to end the season. So we weren't really going to mess with what we had going on rotation wise uh, at that time. And now that there's been this much time off, we got to, we got to take a look at it again and we got to see who's playing well, who's shooting the ball well, who's in shape. Um, uh, Rashawn has had a heck of a year. Alex, uh, came over uh, in the trade and, and really made an impact for us with his physical play and his protection and just his overall size. So there's a lot of things, um, you know, playing Harrison and Belly at the at the four gave us a lot of spacing that we uh, that we seem to, to play well with. So there's a lot of things we're going to look at. And uh, like I said, it's a quick eight games to try to make some noise. So we're going to go with whatever we feel is going to give us the best opportunities and chance to, to win. Maybe last question, Mark Dixie. Hey, Coach. Uh, how do you attack this in, in terms of, you know, given the restrictions you have right now uh, with practice, realistically, how long will it take, do you think, in your mind, before you guys can get up and playing good, comfortable, solid Kings basketball and then looking at your schedule real quick, too, what, what do you think about those eight games you got? Uh, well, I, I think it's going to take the whole, the whole time we're out there. And, and that's uh, if we can really maximize it and really, um, you, know, you know, get a little bit lucky where hopefully we don't get any more positive tests, hopefully we don't get any injuries, then hopefully right before those first, that first game starts, we'll be at that, at that level as far as – uh, physically uh, ready to, to play the way we want to play. Um, with the eight games, look, everyone out there is fighting for playoff spots. So there's, the, you know, there's, you're, you're playing tough teams every single night. And, you know, the, you look at the fact we played New Orleans twice and, and how well they've been playing and, and things like that. It's going to be, it's going to be a great opportunity for our guys to have that type of, uh, of, a pressure and importance on on each game and uh everyone's got got uh got to go out there and earn wins and it it's this the you know it's it's going to be challenging for everybody but also exciting and uh, a good opportunity thank you everybody